Greetings, Faith Chapel. So we're gathering together again to begin our Lenten worship. And for this Lent, we have five Sundays, and I'm going to do a series for you. One of the things that we often think about during Lent is giving up something, the sacrifice, per se. And though certainly there's a great deal that we could give up that would be really good for us to give up, but for this particular series, for this year, what I'm going to focus upon for us is what we give to God. So for each one of the Sundays, there will be something different for us to think about giving to our Lord. So let us begin our worship with prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we once again enter into a season of waiting a season of seeking, a season that calls us to be patient, waiting for what it is that you and your most great wisdom wish to give to us, a gift that leads not to the separation of us from you, but leads us into a deeper relationship with you. We pray, Lord, that your word will open our hearts and our minds to your wisdom and to your call to us as your sons and your daughters in this world today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So for this first Sunday of Lent, our reading comes from the Old Testament. It comes from Deuteronomy. And it is from chapter 6, and it is verses 1 through 7. And you may have heard many times one, at least, verse from this scripture. But listen to the word of our Lord. These are the commands, decrees, and laws of the Lord, your God, directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down, and when you get up. This is the word of our Lord. So, if we're doing a Lenten series about giving, and not 
giving in this world, but giving to our Lord and God in heaven, makes you kind of ask, what on earth can I possibly give to God? Right? We're so small in comparison to our Lord, the creator of all things. And yet, there is much that we can give to our God. And within these scriptures, <clears throat> God is still giving. And God still gives to us all the time. But in this scripture, it does say that we are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And that is something that we can indeed give to our Lord and our Savior, is our love. Not the way that this world loves, that if you do for me, then I do for you, and we have an accord and a love. No. This love is given unselfishly. It is given in a way that requires nothing. And that is something that we should indeed be giving to our Lord. Not because it's required, but because we do love. And we love our God. So what does it possibly mean to love with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength? I think most of us, and especially since Valentine's Day was not too long ago, we consider love of the heart, and we can think we understand that, the giving of our heart. But what does it mean to love with all our soul? Our souls are very individual, very personal to each and every single one of us, and different from each other. But it is that soul that defines us, and that soul that actually seeks more than what we are as individuals. And we can indeed love with all our soul. We actually have a saying, soulmates. But that is for your own earth. It doesn't exactly translate into the kingdom of God because love is for all in the kingdom of God. Not just for the ones who find it with each other. So yes, our souls are capable of loving God. And so how do we love God with all our strength? Well, we're not strong all the time, are we? <laughs> Certainly not. But that strength is more of a time span. It is more of the things that make us stronger, the things that strengthen us for that which comes. And we can love God with all our strength because it is from Him that much of that strength comes from. And indeed, our God is deserving of our love. And we too often think in those terms, does someone deserve our love? Have they met our requirements, our expectations? And well, God shouldn't meet our desires. He shouldn't meet our expectations. For he is God. And though he does not burden us with his expectations. He simply asks us to do things that would make life better for us here on earth. So giving God our love should be a really easy thing to do. And loving God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our strength shouldn't be difficult. Although, how often do we truly think about doing it? Amen. 
And so I hope that this week of Lent, instead of trying to give up something, you will think about giving to our Lord and our God your love. And so let us end our time together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, sometimes we forget just how great you are, just how mighty, how merciful, and how giving you truly are. We ask, Lord, that you help us to understand what it truly means to love and help us to give our love to you with all our hearts, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. And we pray this in Jesus' name, your Son sent to us to build the bridge of relationship. Amen. Peace be with you until I see you again.